Okay, today we are reviewing over uh, circles, properties of circles. Um, the first thing is going over the equation of a circle. Um, remember that um, h is going to be our x-coordinate, and k is going to be our y-coordinate, and then r is our radius. Remember to square that radius when we're writing our, um, when we're writing our equation. Uh, the distance formula is here. Um, you can also use the Pythagorean theorem to uh, find the distance between two points on a graph. Um, and I'll kind of go through a quick way that I do. Um, so the first one, um, write a standard form equation of uh, these two problems. So the first one, we have a center of negative 2, negative 1, and a radius of radical 2. So again, I'm going to go uh, x plus 2. Actually, here, how about I do this? x minus negative 2 squared plus y minus negative 1 squared is equal to uh, radical 2 squared. And so again, to simplify this, I get x plus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to, and then when I square a square root sign, square and the square root cancel each other out, and I'm just left with 2. Uh, next problem, same thing. Redraw my y-axis there. And my x-axis. Um, so the center of that circle is at the order pair 0, 3. Uh, and then just by looking at this, I've got a radius of 2. And so again, I want to write an equation. So I'm going to go uh, x squared plus y minus 3. Oops. Plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4, and so there's my standard form equation. With this problem, uh, given a center and then given a point that the uh, that the circle goes through, so this through point is going to be, um, the, the distance between these guys is going to be my radius, and so uh, when I do this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it up like the Pythagorean theorem, so my radius squared is equal to and then um, the distance between my x values, so to get from 1 to 2, they have a difference of 1, and then I'm going to square it. And then the distance between my y's to get from negative 3 to positive 2, that's a difference of 5, and then I'm going to square it. So to use the Pythagorean theorem, r squared is equal to, this is 26, so I can take the square root of 26 um, <clears throat> to find out what r is. Um, so I know that my radius is going to be square root of 26, and I'm actually going to leave it that way because it's actually easier to write it, um, my standard form equation. So my center is at 1, negative 3, so I'm going to go x minus 1 squared plus uh, y plus 3 squared is equal to my radius squared. So radical 26 squared is just radical 26. And so that's my, um, that's my equation. Uh, remember, the, the way that I got this 26 right here is that I took my radius and I squared it. So when I square radical 26, I just get 26 because the square and the square root cancel each other out. Uh, inscribed angles. Remember that inscribed is a uh, is an angle that is on the the vertex is on the edge of the circle. So if I'm looking at where the angle happens at, this graph right here is happening at uh, point B. And so if I think about what um, arc the angle is eating, so I make this guy into a dragon or whatever, um, it is going to be eating this arc right here. So these two arcs uh, to find the arc, I would double the angle. To find the angle, I would cut the arc in half. Um, then the one thing we do need to remember is central angles, so angles that happen in the center of the circle, um, they are equal to the arc. So with this first problem right here, um, again, angle X and angle Y both happen on the outside of the circle. And so if I look at angle X right here, angle X is eating the arc that's 230, so it's eating this arc that's right here. And so to find out what angle x is, I would cut 230 in half and get 115. Know that uh, this is a tangent point where these angles happen at. And so if two, uh, the green arc is 230, 
the blue arc that I found right here that I just traced, uh, that I just highlighted, um, is going to be 360 minus 230. And so I know that y is going to end up being 130. So y is equal to 130. And then, oops, that's actually not x. That angle right there is 115. And so x is talking about this angle right here. And so I would cut 130 in half, and I would get 65. With the second problem over here, again, same type of thing. Um, so first thing that I can do is I can find out angle B. So again, these are the two lines that make angle B. And so um, the arc that is uh, being eaten by angle B is going to be that 56 degree angle. So I can cut it in half and get that angle B is going to equal 28 degrees. Um, we do need to recognize that this is a diameter going across the middle. Uh, this line right here is a diameter. And so if uh, this arc right here is 112, then I know that this other arc here is going to be 68. And again, if I were to look at what uh, angle is eating that arc, um, this angle A right here is eating the 68 degree arc. And so I know that angle A is going to be 34 degrees. And then the last one, if I wanted to figure out what C was, again, same type of thing. This 56 degree angle uh, is made by a diameter. So the two arcs that I just highlighted have to equal 180. So 180 minus 56 gives me 124. And then since C is an inscribed angle, um, it is going to be half of that. So C ends up being 62. on the back. Um, so being able to find the missing values we have here. So for this one, what we need to start off with first is figuring out what this arc is. Oops. That arc right there, again, uh, corresponds with this angle, this central angle. Um, and so I know that this arc has to be the same. Remember, central angles and arcs are the same, not half. And so if this is a 44 degree angle, this angle A right here uh, shares it. So this angle A is eating that 44 degree arc. So I know that angle A uh, has to be 22 degrees. Once I know this, again, I have all of the um, I have all the arcs except for one. So I can add these guys together. Again, this is 44 plus 160 and then subtract it. So I figure out that this arc C over here is 156. And then this arc B, again, arc this angle B is eating arc C. And so I know that uh, B is going to be half of that, which is 78. And then with this last one, uh, again, same type of thing, finding out the a which angles correspond with which arcs. So angle A, again, is eating this arc 108. So angle A is going to be equal to 54. Angle B is made up of these two lines which eat this arc. So I know that angle B is going to be 30. And then angle C is going to be a vertical angle here. These two are equal to each other right here. And so I know that A, B, and C all have to equal 180. So I know that C is going to equal 96. Do 180 minus 54 minus 30. Got a couple formulas here where I have an angle that happens with two, uh, two chords that uh, are not in the center of a circle and aren't uh, the vertex doesn't happen on the outside of a circle. So we need to, uh, this is not a formula that's going to be given, but we've seen some problems on practice tests. So um, with, to find if I have the angle happening inside of my circle, I know that um, I'm going to add together the arcs. So these are the arcs that go with it. So if this is my angle 1, I have this arc right here and this arc right here. That would be the vertical angles and the arcs that correspond with it. So I would add those arcs together, and then I would divide it by 2. 
And then with the second one down here, um, if I have an arc, an angle that's happening outside of a circle, um, what I would do is I would take the far arc and minus the near arc and then divide it by 2. So with these, um, this first one in the top left hand corner, again, these are my two vertical angles that are both going to be x. And so the arcs that correspond with this are going to be the 90 degree angle and the 46 degree angle. So I'm going to go x is equal to 1 half and then 46 plus 90. Again, I added it because it's inside of the circle. And so I get x is equal to 68. With the second one, the angle is happening outside of the circle. So since it's happening on the outside, I know that I'm going to use subtraction and I'm going to go far arc minus near arc and then cut it in half. So 20 is equal to 1 half, and then in the parentheses, 95 minus z. And so easiest way is to multiply both sides by 2 to get 40 is equal to 95 minus z. Solve for z by adding the z to the other side, then subtracting the 40, and I get z is equal to 55. On the bottom left-hand side, um, again, I've got 35-degree angle here and here, so I know that the two arcs that go with it are the 30-degree arc and the x arc. So I have 35 is equal to 1 half, parentheses, oops, yep, x plus uh, 30. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get 70 is equal to x plus 30, and so x is equal to 40. And then the last one that I have right here, um, again, angle is happening outside of the arc, so it's going to be far arc minus near arc. So I have x is equal to 1 half, and then in parentheses, 72 minus 22. So when I do that, I get x is equal to 25.